Experiment 1, the tensile test. Please refer to the practical guide for general comments, rules and regulations, as well as the criteria required to successfully complete this experiment. Why is the tensile test important? The tensile test gives us an in-depth understanding of the mechanical properties of a material and how these materials react when a load is applied to them. The important information we can extract from the tensile test is the stress versus strain curve for the particular material that was tested. The tensile test makes use of two machine grips that grip the sample at its two far ends. One machine grip is stationary while the other is mounted on a load cell. The gauged sample is then pulled to the point of failure. While the test is running, the tensile tester simultaneously measures the force applied to the sample via the load cell and the elongation of the gauge length up to the point of fracture. From this data, it is possible to construct a stress versus strain graph for the material. The stress strain curve is composed of two distinct areas. The first area is the linear region of the graph where elastic deformation occurs. In this portion of the graph, the stress is directly proportional to the strain and thereby confirms Hooke's law. The stress at any point of the graph can be calculated as the instantaneous force that is applied to the sample divided by the initial cross-sectional area of the sample. The moment the stress exceeds the elastic limit, plastic deformation occurs and the sample will permanently deform. A non-linear elongation will start to be observed where a section of the gauge will start to thin. This is known as necking. In the plastic region of the graph, Hooke's law is no longer valid. When the sample reaches its maximum elongation, failure occurs. Important points on all stress strain curves are indicated on the graph. Sigma y is the yield point and the point of transition from elastic deformation to plastic deformation. This graph is specific to low carbon steel and a clear yield point can be observed. In the stress strain curve for brass, a special point is used known as the sigma 0.2% stress or proof strength. This is used to generate a theoretical yield point for materials that do not show a clear yield point. The way in which this point is acquired is as follows. First, identify the point where the material has experienced 0.2% of its maximum elongation and mark it on the x-axis. Now draw a line that is parallel to the linear portion of the graph. Where this line intersects the stress-strain curve is where the proof strength of the material lies. The objective of this experiment is to determine the tensile properties of both low-carbon steel and brass. Please pay close attention to the practical demonstration. First measure the diameter and gauge length of the samples using a vernier. If you are uncertain how to use a vernier, refer to the presentation named Vernier Use. Unscrew the fine motion handle of the tensile tester and gently pull the handle outwards in order to release the coarse motion handle. Turn the coarse motion handle until there is enough space to insert the sample. Insert the sample by pushing the spring-loaded grips towards the springs and placing the sample in the grip. Pull the grips away from the springs in order to provide traction of the grip to the sample. Using the coarse motion handle, move the other machine grip in place and repeat the process. Using an elastic band, secure the extensometer to the gauge length of the sample as demonstrated. Gently push the fine motion handle back into place and tighten the fastening. Zero the top dial of the tensile test by pressing the star on the far right. Take note of the reading on the bottom scale as this value must be subtracted from all subsequent readings. Turn the fine motion handle at an average speed as demonstrated. 
Once the test is started, do not stop turning the handle until the sample fails. Use a recording device to record the two dials on the tensile tester. Once the sample fails, remove it from the tensile tester. Measure the new gauge length and the diameter of the sample at the fracture point.